On September 5, 2014, Rodoshane saw a movie he considers the worst of all time. Seeing this, the man upstairs decided to punish him for his naivety by exposing him to the true horrors the world of film possesses and show him what a truly awful film is. Rodoshane was unaware that a whole other world of film exists where the films are so bad, the theaters that played films like Battlefield Earth won't even take them. This was the beginning of a nightmare. This is direct to video hell. Who are you? I am the Reaper of Hell, caretaker of the Asylum, the house of the insane films. The Asylum? Yeah, looks like a great place to visit, but I really should be going. You shall go nowhere! You must experience the insanity the films there have to offer. Sure, sure, Wh whatever you say, Reaper guy, uh, just don't hurt me. Not like, not like you'd be the type of guy to hurt me or anything, it's just a- Silence! Okay. It's time to look at films that are so out there, they are trying to be dead. So, how can a film try to be bad? There's a market for it, actually. Some people enjoy it. Yeah, those people don't have my job. So, what is it called? I'm sure it has an unbelievably cheesy name. Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty? Isn't that- No, it's a different one. A different one? Yes. Well, how bad could it- It's pretty bad. Well, you never know- I know. It's terrible. But Maleficent was- Not complete terrible like this one is. <sighs> Look, Reaper, if you watch my reviews, you know I'm supposed to assume the film might not be bad. But it is. Of course it is! We're in direct-to-video hell! Duh. Ugh. Just roll the intro already. So, yeah, the Asylum did a rendition of Sleeping Beauty. Ripping off Maleficent, but with extremely low production values, horrid acting, and doing nothing original or interesting with the story. Well, except adding zombies. Hey, this might not be so bad after all. It is. Will you shut up? So we open with some beauty shots of mountains. I'm Bear Grylls. I climbed Mount Everest, I did a bunch of other manly things, and now I'm here to talk to you about Sleeping Beauty. So then we get narration by... Once upon a time, there was a king and queen. Gimli? We then are teleported to a local renaissance fair, where a king and queen are celebrating the birth of their daughter. Look awfully silly if we can't come up with a name by the time you have to make the announcement. Look, oh, the kingdom will rise like the dawn for her. Perfect. Then that is what she shall be named. Don't you mean Aurora? Her name in, like, every other adaptation? And yeah, you all know the story. The evil witch shows up to crash the party, the parents are none the wiser and let her in for some reason, and she bestows a curse upon her, saying that she will die if her hand is ever cut by a spindle by the time she turns 16. Oh, and the evil witch's name? I am slighted by your exception. Queen Tambra, we meant you no offense. Yeah, apparently they had to change all the names for no reason. My gift to you is this. By your 16th birthday, you will receive a prick by a spindle. And in payment for your parents' offense, you shall die. Is it really that easy to curse someone? You just say it and it happens? Hmm. Don't even think about it. You are no fun. So the nice fairies confront Tambria in the most monotone way possible. And then they have a light throwing fight. It's light fight. Kill your friends, kill your neighbors, kill everyone with light fight. Don't you just love how stupid these two look? What, were they trained for sword fighting by the Black Knight? All right, we're calling a draw. And after this stupid fight, this happens. Don't you know that my power is so much more glorious than yours, as you shall see? You have killed my sister. Now you'll pay for your betrayal. <laughs> what just happened? That was way too much stupid for five seconds. Let's watch it again and slow it down a bit and just walk through that. So, she says she is more powerful, uses two hands to make some sort of super spell, and then 
Her sister dies off screen, to which her sister is obviously grief stricken. Anyway, we get our opening title sequence. Yeah, so high budget. And then I'm just gonna skip to the interesting part where she gets cursed and stuff. So, some creepy boy comes up to her and pulls her away from her 16th birthday party. Open it. I've never seen anything like it. However, did you make something so beautiful? I made it with this. What is it? It's a spindle. And remember, she's been told her whole life that spindles are bad. Do not touch them, do not go near them. Heck, this is probably the first time she's even seen one of the things. And what is her reaction? You're not supposed to touch a spindle. Why not? That silly old spell is no more. I'm past my 16th birthday. It's harmless. <laughs> no. Wow, I mean, I know the witch disguised herself as the boy to try and manipulate her into touching the spindle, but she just grabs the thing and touches it like, oh, spindle! I mean, come on, lady! Use your brain! Why did he lick it? I honestly haven't the faintest idea. You stupid little girl. I mean, you're, you're not, not supposed, supposed to touch, touch a spindle. spindle. The eagerness of you. Yeah, and apparently you can disguise yourself as anyone too. In that case, why didn't she just disguise herself as like a guard years ago and just stab her with the freaking thing? I, I, I digress. This is an asylum movie. Your brain should have shut off by now. I wish it was. Anyway, she's a total idiot and does it all herself. I can honestly say that everything from this point onwards is pretty much all her fault. Even though Tambria did trick her by magically making the moon look like it was later than it was. My dearest king and queen, your child is fast asleep. Get away from her. And soon, so shall you be. The moon is full, or so it seems. Is there no limit to her power? If she's that powerful, why does she need to be queen of some dopey castle? At least go get a nicer one! So, yeah, everyone goes to sleep and the evil witch gloats for a bit. Then we cut to 100 years later! Yeah, kind of sudden. Where a prince is throwing out exposition. My father won't leave me his kingdom unless I find a wife and sire an heir. Oh yeah, and the prince is kinda not a nice prince. And the movie makes this consistently clear. You, come here. Prince Jason has displeased the king. Again. Take the prince's punishment, you putrid dog. Again. So the prince has a little brother named Barrow, who's the perfect one and who will obviously get the girl in the end. Hey, spoilers! Okay, it is kind of predictable. The prince finds out from Barrow about the Legend of Sleeping Beauty and the castle and stuff, and decides to go out there and try to free the princess. What does it mean? It means, my lord, that the Sleeping Beauty, Princess Dawn, will wake and her kingdom will pass to the prince who has bestowed upon her the true love's kiss. They get to the castle and need to cross the river, where they're attacked by some horrible CGI. Oh, that's just the fish! <laughs> <laughs> ah, look at it! So low res, so generic! So they get past the horrid CGI thingy and make their way up to the front of the castle. Frederick's dead. I told you, it was part of the curse. How do you know of this curse? My grandfather was a knight. He told my father a story who told me that within the walls of Oliveta, the dead walk while the living sleep. Why did you not say anything? I never thought to pay much attention. What does he mean? 
means we're all walking towards our own death. They have trouble finding a way inside and decide to spend the night. Barrow goes off on his own and discovers a little girl there. What are you, a ghoul or a boy? I don't know what you think you are, but my name is Newt. Newt? Like aliens? We might be ripping off a few too many movies here. Wow. The next day, the evil witch, who's been in the castle all this time apparently, just cooped up in there. I mean, what did she do all those years? She notices the men outside, and to deal with them, she sends zombies after them. Yeah, zombies. This is The Walking Dead. But unlike The Walking Dead, these zombies aren't scary or interesting at all. They won't run! We just want to hug you! So they fight off the zombies and after the death of a couple of pointless side characters, the group makes it the way inside. They enter a room in the basement, which is foggy cause atmosphere. And they hear some poorly rendered CGI creature down there with them. If I wanted your opinion, I'd ask for it. The awfully textured monster captures the prince. But the group decide to keep going without him. Look, the prince! Look, we have to go back! This was a trap! We'll be dead if we go looking for him blindly. This is all your fault! So they fight more bad CGI. Ugh. That monster makes my CGI look good. Okay, don't push it. And then another one of them dies. So the group is trying to find the princess while also trying to rescue the prince, who's still alive apparently. They run into more of the zombie things. Burn in hell! And take your friends with you! Alright, enough with the references. I'm sorry, okay? It's too easy. Take your cape off. Take it off. Any day now. Come on. Take it off. Take it off. Okay, I guess he died then. Wow. The last two get captured by the evil queen, who reveals to them her evil plan. Uh, a family reunion of sorts. What is wrong with you? She's just showing them the movie. Could you just skip us to the end credits? I called on the night and prayed the spell. What's happened to you? Bite your tongue, Barrow. Especially when you're talking in front of my queen. Wow, the twist this movie is taking. Wait, isn't she like 200 or something? Yeah, it's kind of creepy. So Barrow asks Newt to take him to the princess. While they're trying to find her, Tambria takes the prince to try to enlist his help. If I'm to spend an eternity with someone, I need to know that they're going to be by my side. I need you to kill her. Oh, she's... Beautiful. Is that what you were going to say? She's also about to be very dead. Very dead? Is there like a dead scale? Yeah, right here. I see. 
So she asks him to kill Dawn, but he instead tries to wake her with a kiss. But because of that stupid true love clause the fairies put on, why on earth did they include that anyway? In fact, why didn't they just reverse the curse? A curse that has been done cannot be erased. And so I cast a spell upon her grace, until a prince does play his part and come to her pure of heart. She shall lie in protected sleep until true love's kiss with passion deep. The kingdom too shall sleep as well until this kiss doth break the spell. Oh, you're turning your brain on again. Oh, sorry. So she kills the prince and tries again with the beard guy. And that also fails. He tries to help her escape. So she kills him, then tries again with Barrow. And that fails too, so she tries to kill Barrow. Hmm, it's like this is repetitive or something. Whoa! Getting a bit dizzy here. <laughs> Barrow gets away, but Tambria takes Newt hostage. He is finally able to kill the horrid CGI. I've defeated your dead. Your wraiths, your monsters. Not all of them. Oh, I guess not all of them. Hey, maybe this will be a cool long boss fight. There, it's done. Release. Them. Or he'll beat the thing in two seconds. Very well. Be gone. So Tambria gives an evil speech and tries to summon more monsters, but Barrow is able to make it to Dawn and kisses her, which takes away all of Tambria's power. She confronts them, but is killed by Barrow with an over-the-top back thrust. Leave. Queen Tambria, you're henceforth banished from my kingdom. It is my kingdom! My kingdom! What is she doing? I mean, once, I can maybe understand she made a mistake, but she's moving her finger up again like she's gonna prick herself. AGAIN! And yeah, we get the happily ever after thing. Never would have guessed that. And they lived happily ever after. <sighs> well... Or perhaps not. I would like to bestow a gift upon the child. What in the video hell was that? So that was Sleeping Beauty. It sucked. Let's talk about it. Wow, Asylum is able to achieve a whole new level of terrible. There's absolutely no reason for this movie to exist. It's a complete rehash of the Sleeping Beauties we've seen before. Nothing is done better or that differently. It isn't new or original in any way. But honestly, it's a kind of fun thing to watch. Sure, the acting is worse than dreadful and the film often looks like one of those History Channel reenactments, but it's so terrible it can be entertaining at times. And that's what sets the films that Asylum makes apart. They almost aspire to be bad, because that's the charm they want. Does it work consistently? Not exactly. This movie can really drag at times. But overall, it's silly enough to justify watching. If you are into that so bad it's good type of film. I have to say, Reaper, I'm kind of excited about what's next. I mean, a studio trying to make a bad version of a popular movie. Oh, I wouldn't be so hastily excited. You don't yet know what is lurking within the asylum. Yeah, we'll find out soon. Yes, very soon indeed.
It's Life Fighting, coming to a store near you.